there was no title race to look forward to. The penultimate game had plenty of drama in La Liga and the race for the Champions League, the relegation zone. And with me to discuss all this, I'm joined by Oscar. And Oscar, we saw that Atleti Sevilla game and what drama at the end. Yeah, it was pretty dramatic because it was Sevilla that needed one point for the Champions League place and they fell behind to Atleti, who was a Jimenez header. They pushed and pushed, and Nestri hit the post, I think, with a header. And finally, with six minutes left to go, and Nestri, who struggled for goals all season, gets the goal that Sevilla needed to seal UCL football for the third season in a row. Cue the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he takes up the shirt and everything. And this came, it came in the backdrop, this game of the news, maybe was a rumor at the moment because Monchi is denying it that Julian Lopetegui was set to leave as Sevilla manager at the end of the season. Monchi was talking to Diego Martinez. So there was a lot of tension in that game and mm -hmm. it felt that Sevilla were just going to succumb to that tension because when Atleti scored, there was no real response in the first mm -hmm. half up until those couple of chances in the second half that Lopetegui I'm sorry, that NSU had. Yeah, it wasn't like you given the way Sevilla had fallen apart in some senses this second half of the season, you kind of worried for them when Atleti scored the first goal. But you know, Sevilla never surrendered, it's in their motto. So, yeah, it was very important for Lopetegui to get this um, achievement because he's the first manager since Helenio Herrera who's gotten Sevilla into the Champions League three times in a row. So, yeah. People have their frustrations with him for not maybe being brave or anything, but I can't um, deny the fact that he has improved Sevilla and made them a Champions League regular. Yeah, and I'll say to the point, like, I know he has a lot of doubts because I'm a big supporter. And, but even this season, I've been very frustrated with him. And my point with Lopsegui is that he's turned to be into a team where finishing fourth feels like failure. And that's a yeah. testament to the work he's done. True. And I get the fact that he's had more stable squads than Unai Emery and Sam Pauli or Pablo Machine and other Sevilla managers. But the fact that we look at the Sevilla team and we're like, if they can finish third or fourth, we're looking at this season that's failure. That's a testament to the job he's done to bring Sevilla up to that level where we feel that they can challenge for it. True. And I just like the scenes at the end of the game where the players, they pick him up and they bring to the there because he's had a rough time with injuries, with things going wrong in the squad. And you know what? He's one point behind Atletico, I believe, who have a super squad and they were meant to blow the league away. So it was nice to see that the dressing room is fully behind him. Yeah. I really don't get where the rumor is coming from, though. Because, I mean, it, he's not like he's done anything wrong. Like, for it is a massive success for Sevilla, like you said. Yeah. But, you know, given the circumstances of this season where Real Madrid didn't look strong going into it, Barcelona certainly didn't. And then during the season, Barcelona and Athletes were way behind Sevilla. A lot of people expected them to finish second. So I guess that's where the disappointment comes from, you know. I saw one Valencia fan say Sevilla finishing fourth in a two-horse race. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. As, a, as a job, so yeah, yeah. But to be honest, like I'm not sure that I should be jabbing anyone at this moment. That, 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 that's, true. that's true. I, I'll say even when they were second, right? You could tell, like, and we discussed this with Sevilla. They're a team that they need everyone to be fit and fired mm -hmm. to be good. Yeah. When you take one player out of the system, they look all over the place. And I saw Sevilla against um, Atletico Madrid. And in that game, I believe they lost, they lost Montiel to injury. They lost mm -hmm. Acuna to injury. They played mm -hmm. Ivan Romero as the striker. And that mm -hmm. just encapsulates how this season has gone. They've struggled with it's so injured. many casualties. Yeah. And eventually it was going to break and it just broke in a spectacular way. And I know people were like, okay, they should have challenged for the title, but you look at the Real Madrid team that, that we have in front of us. Yeah. Although not many people rate them to start the season, they've shown that they're a strong team. Yeah. I think one of the differences in this in the title race was that 
when Real Madrid had their slump between late January and early February, Sevilla was also drawing too many games. So it's not like Real Madrid were in ev- in real danger of letting this slip. Another yeah. thing that Real Madrid were much luckier with injuries. They're, they're the better team for sure, and they deserve it, but I'm just saying, in comparison to Sevilla, Real Madrid had it much better on the injury front. And that's yeah. just what it is sometimes. Last year, Real Madrid yeah. was lucky with injuries. This year, yeah. not so. But that's how it is. And I'll say, apart from the fact that Real Madrid were the better team, the key difference between them and the rivals, either it's Barcelona, Atletico, or Sevilla, it's that they've had their full component more often than not. And on the full component, they've had replacements come off the bench to be strong. I, I, I think Lopsegui said this, and Manchester said this. Sevilla had not had two games where they played the same starting line in a row. And most yeah. of that's been due to injury. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's just encapsulated their season. True. But despite all that, they've got for it. And I'm sure Sevilla will be jubilant about that. And they yeah. got for it to next season. Yeah, and what do we think? Do we think they deserve it? Do you think they'll be good candidates? And what can what should Lopsegi change or Monkey change in the market to make sure if they're in this position next season where halfway through the season they're challenging Madrid, Barca, Atleti, whoever, they can stay the course? Yeah. I t- yeah, they did deserve it, obviously. League table over 37 games. How, God knows how many months doesn't lie. As what they need to change, I've always felt that Sevilla need younger players because the best players they have and the players that provide a lot of X factor to them in Fernando and um, Papu are on the wrong side of 30. Navas, who is still one of arguably the league's best right back, wrong side of 30. So they need fresh blood. This one is a little thing I've always thought, but I think they need more Spanish internationals in the team. I don't know it might help them somehow. But yeah, yeah they, they need younger players overall. So they need yeah, some it, to beef up the squad a bit. Yeah, because it seems like the strategy Manchester went through the market is go for players right in their prime mm-hmm. or just above their prime. Yeah. And they've got, he's gone from experience to be youth and that clearly hurt them. Not that Fernando is an amazing player, so is Paco and Jesus mm-hmm. Navas, but you can tell that they had physical strains this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's talk about it's Atleti for a moment. Sure. And this was the last game of Luis Suarez. And I love the way he was honored by the Atleti fans. You can see the emotions. Yeah. It may be his last game, but his last game in Metro Montano. How yeah. much of an impact has Luis Suarez had in this Atleti season? A massive impact. Like last year, he came in with a point to prove, with whatever, and he won the main league title. It's as simple as that. So he's, I, I don't know, it's up to a fan how they define what a legend is to them, but he's definitely made an impact on this athletic team. This next season, you know, it wasn't really the same as last season because he didn't have the energy like he had last year. Simeone definitely didn't even trust him that much when they played against stronger teams who are quicker. So, yeah, at least he was honored properly by the fans. I wish our fans were yet to give him the goodbye he deserves because he's definitely a legend for us. But, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what it is. Yeah, I'll, I'll share the same. I'll say it's a legend because how many league tests has he won? 11? Sure. sure and sure, he sure. played a big part in, in one, one of them. Of, yeah. A massive part. Yeah. If he doesn't score against Osasuna, he doesn't score against Bayer the lead, or yeah. maybe scored against Real. I'm not sure what the, the Real Sassoon. If he doesn't score those two goals, mm-hmm. they don't win the league. So True. I believe he's played a massive role. And it's be interesting to see what the transfer strategy is for Atleti moving forward. Um, yeah. But let's move on to Real Betis, one of the rebels for Sevilla in the top four race. And uh, if you're a Betis fan, you, you must be glad because. Yeah. You look at this, and not just the game against Barcelona, but that game against LK. Those three games against LK, Real Sociedad, and they really screwed up Betis' target for the Champions League. Yeah, th- that was when they lost the chance, to be honest, because 
And towards the end, towards, in the last few weeks, Atleti and Seville were both catchable for sure. And Betis had the easier fixtures, but they didn't make them count. Still, the fact that a Betis fan would be frustrated by fifth place and a Copa del Rey win shows how far they've come under Pellegrini, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's massive for Betis. Mm-hmm. Because normally with Betis sides, they can go on runs where they qualify for Europe. And then next season, they're somewhere in mid-table, they're getting relegated. Mm-hmm. But with Pellegrini, they've gone from strength to strength. And it's just, I feel it's a massive success. If I give Betis a grade, I'll say in La Liga, it's an A. In the Copa del Rey, it's an A+. Plus. Maybe in Europe, I'll give them a B. But given the fact that Eintracht like, knocked them out in the final, maybe yeah. that's even too harsh, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's an A-plus season for real Betis, in my opinion, because, yeah. Every everything they wanted, a European place and the trophy, they got it. it. Just you know, the Champions League was always going to be a step too far, given how Barcelona and Atleti came back into things. But yeah, it's still a very very successful season, and hopefully yeah. they can build on it and keep some players and challenge again next year. Yeah, it'll be nice. It'll be nice if they can, and it'll be interesting to see. What kind of players they bring in mm-hmm. because they're already bringing in Luis Felipe or and then the Brazilian guy, Simon Luis, I think it was last name. So mm-hmm. if that can strengthen them, maybe they can put up a bigger challenge. But just a point on that Sevilla, Atleti, Barca, and Madrid being the top four for the third consecutive year in a row is that a problem for La Liga that we're not seeing a team that has challenged Sevilla or Atleti? Mm. I don't say it's a problem because, in at least in the la, in two of the last three seasons, Villarreal and Real Betis definitely gave fourth place a run for their money. So it's not the worst thing, and I do feel though that Real Sociedad and Real Betis and Villarreal could, you know, take the next step and step out of their comfort zone. But yeah, it's definitely strange because before we used to see the fourth team change almost every year. Because we yeah. had that one time, Real Sociedad the next year, Athletic Club the next year, and Valencia then Sevilla. So, yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. those four clubs for being consistent. So let's not take anything away from them. No, yeah, sure, because they're, they're like really brilliant sides. And Villarreal, they're, they're a team that I feel had the best chance in terms of the squad. Mm-hmm. challenge this top four but I'll say in La Liga they've, they've disappointed and you can tell you can see that in the game against Rasta so that's today they had chances but at, at the same time Rasta said they came back partly thanks to Rui again he's becoming a huge issue for them yeah. and Rasta said they're in the Europa League again they're going to qualify in my opinion I, I would have rather the area out in the Europa League and Rasta said they conference because I feel mm-hmm. they both um the area will suit the Europe League more, while we also said the Conference League is their level. Yeah, I mean, it's a fair statement given that we also said that have finished second in the group they've always been in. Now, granted, they've gotten some really tough groups, but yeah. you, you, you think they can do better, like make that next step, go have a deep European run. Uh, yeah, it's great for them and for Villarreal. You know, different things have caused them to not qualify for the Europa League. Injuries being one of them. And self-sabotage, because a lot of the times Villarreal have been their worst enemy. Remember that run between January and February where they were losing to relegation teams? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Points. I think they lost to Cadiz. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to be honest, this is the first time they've played against the fellow top seven team that they've looked somehow out of sorts. Yeah. Again, even though they lost to Barcelona and Sevilla early in the season, they still put up a fight and were competitive. And they were very yeah. good against both Madrid teams. Just the, the form against the bottom teams is not good at all. And I'll say another thing is the area, although they are great against, like you mentioned, they, they were great against Sevilla, they were great against Atleti and Madrid, they didn't lose to Atleti and Madrid, if I'm correct. Yeah, they didn't. The problem is, 
they have too many draws. And similar to the uh, they have too many draws against like team teams and Villarreal too. That's an issue for them. They don't convert their draws to win sufficiently enough. Yeah. And now it feels like and now it feels like this season of getting to the Champions League fi- semi final could end without Europe totally. And financially, that would probably be bad, but maybe it might be a good thing in the long run to just have that singular focus of getting top four. Yeah, but do you think it's like, I'm not sure whether it might be like, like if they didn't, if they qualify for Europe, then maybe that would have been like a sufficient enough. But thinking about it this way, the Conference League and not playing in the league and not playing any European football, what's the major difference? It's pitching. To, to be honest, sure. so rather than have those extra games, you can just have a single focus where we're like, you know what, we can just focus on the league. Yeah. Let's aim for at least fifth if we can get yeah. four. And, and you never know, maybe they can also push for three if Atleti or Sevilla have a wonky season like this season. Mm-hmm. Sure. So we move over to the bottom. Let's talk about the team that's right behind. Villarreal, because Athletic Club going to match the oh. still have a lot to play. Oh yeah, that, that is that is true because they're like just a point behind them. And you know what? When we were watching, when I was watching that Sevilla game, I was like, if Villarreal fail to win this, it makes Sevilla's job a lot more hard because they would have had to play Athletic. And you're right. Like now, maybe it's the job's much easier for Athletic that Sevilla has nothing to play for. Mm. And the Real have to go to the Camp Nou to play yeah. Barcelona. I mean, we have nothing to play for, but you know, I, I guess the guys will still want to win the last home game of the season. So, yeah, it's a tough task for Villarreal. Not how you look at it. Yeah, it is. And how do you feel Athletic will do in Europe, given the fact that, like Sevilla, in terms of managerial position, there are also there's also uncertainty at that because there are elections going on at the moment. Mm-hmm. One candidate said that Marcelino will not be his coach. Marcelino hasn't signed, signed in Bruno. Mm-hmm. Are yeah. we confident that they would be good in Europe? I guess it all depends on what happens. If Marcelino is to go, they need to get a manager that can adequately replace him. And I've heard you know, Valverde, Poch being rumors. The Poch one is less realistic, but if he, if they do get someone like Poch, then yeah, they could do well in the conference league. Because given like the teams that would be in the conference league, I'd say they'd be among the favorites. Yeah, it will possibly be them, West Ham, and, and it's hard to see. Yeah, yeah. and um, maybe probably, I'm look, I Fiorentina. So it looks like. Yeah, and I would love to see Valverde back there. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the same. Yeah, but... yeah I've missed a great yeah. Yeah. So good. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, to give a final prediction, who do you think is going to finish seven? Uh, I'm going to say Villarreal. Because I'm predicting that both games are going to win in a draw. Gaia will like draw 2 2 with us unless really does something absolutely stupid. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm going to say Atleti because Ferran Torres needs a goal. And if he doesn't score against really, then <laughs> we need to <laughs> this I'm just kidding. But if, if, if Ferran is going to get his many shots off, and score one of them finally, it's probably going to be against Rudy. So I'll say at sure. seven. So right. So right. just a word on Barcelona. Hetafe, they drew it the zeros. Or was it as bad as it was? Yeah. Honestly, I still don't know if we had a shot on target. Let me see. <laughs> uh, we had 71% possession, five shots, one shot on target. They had nine shots. Yeah, the game. I was looking at this game by the side of my eye while I was watching the multi goal. And I was like, ah, well, given the fact that we have a skeleton defense and Ricky Pudge in midfield, we're doing fine. <laughs> and, uh, 
We've sealed second. Etafe have sealed promotion after what was a terrible start. Pique Sanchez Flores deserves a medal and whatnot. And yeah, both teams are happy. Yeah, it just felt like one of those games where like both teams are happy with zero zero. Yeah. And there's like an unwritten agreement. Like that. Yeah, just kick the ball around. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But moving on to the to the bottom this time <laughs> for the yeah. Rose. Uh, we said goodbye to Levante, man. How sad were you when he got the straight up word about? Yeah, that was tough. Like when I saw the picture of Morales crying at the post match interview, I think I cried too because it was heartbreaking. Like the effort he, he in particular, put into trying to lift Levante up, get it lift Levante. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the effort was just amazing. And yeah, Levante are down, but they made sure they took all of us with them. <laughs> <laughs> and and with Alavez, they are we are we gonna miss them? I don't want to be harsh because I don't want to be harsh, but the thing is that it gets to a point where you just want to see a team make progress, you know, because Alavez are basically like they've been fighting relegation because they've been making bad major appointments or sacking managers at the wrong time. So Maybe a season or two in the second that's be able to reevaluate and reset would be good, honestly, because you can't keep trying to survive until the last day of the season every time. At some point, we're going to go down. And it was sad in this match because they took the lead. They actually hit the post before Levante got their second. Yeah, you know, it was just one of those days for them that has ultimately sealed their fate. Yeah, because when it first came out, they were. A breath of fresh air. The mm-hmm. fans were great. Sure. We, they got to the Copa del Rey final that year. They had like young players like Pedro Hernandez come in. He was very good. Mm-hmm. Marcus Llorente also played in that team. And you got really excited about the style of this team. But after that season, they tilled off a bit. Those season where Adelado was there, where I believe they were like fifth for a while. But since then, it's just been down you know, for manager as you said. For recruitment, for everywhere, they don't yeah, just excite anyone. Relying on Hustle to carry them, and even though he scored the most goals he's ever scored in league season, they still went down because there's only so much one guy can do. I know Escalante came in in January and did a big carry job too, but it just wasn't to be. No, it wasn't to be. But speaking about strikers who are doing a carry job, Maruki, yeah, doing a carry job. I'll say after Aubameyang, he's possibly the most impactful guy we've signed. Exactly. Yeah. He, Aubameyang, and Borja Mayoral, but Mariki is over Borja Mayoral because he's just been so excellent for his Mallorca team, good in the air, clinical when he gets his chances. And he and another striker who I really like a lot, Abdon Prats, scored the goals that sent... Lord Abdon. <laughs> yeah. I sent the visit America study, which I prefer to put some more into. Because <laughs> right now, America are out of the relegation zone and their fate is in their hands. But the problem is, I believe they have to go to El Sadar on the final day. Yeah. And America's away form is terrible. So you're going to need to pull up an extra effort. So soon I have nothing to play for. Except for your San Hugo's farewell. That'll be his last game. Yeah. But they still need to, you know, do more of the same. Because Abdon in his post-match interview was like, he hopes his goal is going to be historic for Mallorca. Yeah, if they go down, it's not going to be that historic. Yeah. But maybe to be fair, maybe like Oye already got his goal, like he already got his farewell. So maybe, yeah. maybe he wouldn't be as motivated. And yeah, yeah Gide used to coach us in a while and left on the turf. Like he, I believe he took them to Champions League or to fourth, fourth place. They didn't qualify. The last place was in fourth place while they mm-hmm. there. So maybe they might do their manager favor. Mm-hmm. Or not. <laughs> yeah. Okay, seriously. But Cadiz, man, they had a chance against Real Madrid B and they, they didn't take advantage of it. Really. They had, had a penalty. Yeah. yeah. Besides that penalty, 
every time the multi goal went to the Real Madrid Cadiz game, it was a Cadiz opportunity every single time, and they they messed up. They really should have taken advantage of some terrible defending by Real Madrid today. But Lunin, man, I thought Courtois was bad, but Lunin <laughs> is something else because <laughs> he yes. like where he made like a triple save or something. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he was excellent in the game. Real Madrid, you know, they dropped points against the teams I wanted them to beat and they relegated. <laughs> okay, okay, he didn't relegate yeah. the advantage, but you get the team. But yeah, yeah. things that Real Madrid went easy and Cardi still couldn't beat them and now are facing relegation. Yeah, next week they're playing Alaves who are already down. You think we'll see the same scripts that happened with Levante Alaves fail in Alaves? Versus yeah, I, I guess it could happen. But I was really hoping that Alves would beat Levante so that that game would have meaning for both teams. But now I, I'm afraid what will happen is that Cadiz will somehow survive and Marika won't be able to do the job on the road again. Yeah, so, so you're going for Cadiz and you're going for Cadiz to survive? Yes. I think I share that opinion. I just, I think it would be hard for them to beat us. So yeah, it's really it would be hard to beat us as soon as away from them. But then the thing is that the only comfort they can have is that as soon as home form this year, this season hasn't been as good as it usually is. So there's hope. And Mariki is, you know, he's really a motivational guy with his play. So, if Javier Aguirre can just get the right players on the pitch from the start and apply pressure, I'm sure they can score enough to beat us sooner. And with Mallorca, right, when the season first started, everyone had high spent depth, like Taki Kubo, Tangien. Mm-hmm. Um, they brought in Mati off the, the US International. So people were excited about this and everyone felt their signings made sense. Mm-hmm. But they're still they're struggling at the moment. And where do you think it went wrong? That's yeah. the lack of football tutor. Uh, yeah, the lack, the lack of the lack of goals, honestly. That's why Mariki's signing was so crucial because up until then they were having problems scoring. Defensively, they were okay for most of the season, besides the the two games they played against Real Madrid and the horror show against Granada. And by the way, we didn't really talk about Granada, who aren't exactly out of the woods yet. Yeah, yeah, because they, they could be in trouble too. They have, but they have Espanol, I think. Espanol, Espanol, Espanol letting everyone ball. beat them now. So, yeah. Yeah. And Espanol. did you see Vicente Moreno got fired? Yeah, I saw it. And I saw some Espanol fans pretty happy about that because, yeah, they felt like it's time for change. It's time to, for a team to take the next level. And, yeah, following his sacking, Espanyol finally didn't lose for once because they drew <laughs> on the rearranged game. Okay. But yeah, the rearranged game for the, like six consecutives. Uh, but with Espanyol, they're a weird club because like they're they're sort of like a yo-yo in the table club where no matter what happens, no matter what managerial change they do, they're mm-hmm. always somewhere between like eight and. Yeah, so it's always it's, yeah, they're always somewhere in that range, except that one season where they went down catastrophically. Yeah, you know, you'd hope that with new owners and stuff, they'd improve. And it seems like they're, they're clearing house at the moment. Because not only did the Sensei Moreno go, but mm-hmm. they also went, they yeah. changed the president recently. So it seems like it's, things are changing at this point. So, but so the game next week, I just can't see them getting into Granada. Granada, they're such a good team. Mm-hmm. Even against Betis, they had numerous chances to score. Yeah, exactly. Very so, Silva yeah. and Petzela were monsters in defense. Yeah, and the bar also helped Betis. Yeah. So I, I just, I think they're, they're going to stay up. Yeah, I think Granada will stay up. And it's more between Cadiz and Mallorca. And then we all have Celta versus Kochi. Okay, which is two mid-table teams with 
Absolutely. Nothing to play for. And yeah, we also found out that Nolito would be leaving Celta this year. I'll be safe. What do you think his career ranks? Because he was at Barcelona, I believe, during during the time when they were like they were great and he so played one game there. He went to Manchester mm -hmm. City during Pep's time, came back to the uh, didn't do too much. Mm -hmm. And at Celta, he was okay. Yeah. At Celta in his first spell, he was very, very good, actually. Yeah. As I remember before he went to Man City, he was being linked to Barcelona a lot. His second spell wasn't as electric, but he was still a steady player. And yeah, he, he already got injured and was going to miss the rest of the season anyway, so he's already played his last game. But it was good to see him, you know, get a goodbye that he deserves from Palaidas. Yeah, it was, it was very good to see. And hopefully, hopefully we'll see players like it. Because when he was younger, he was so electric and way mm -hmm. he moved, way he scored. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what uh, were Barcelona's worst nightmare <laughs> when they were. <Yeah. laughs> I remember the first season, two of them got back together. These guys beat us 4 1, was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that game was crazy. That game was crazy. And the start of our Balaedos curse that we've, <laughs> we've some, we saw, well, I thought we broke it, but then we blew it <laughs> no. this year. It was, it was spectacular to come back. <laughs> Yeah, I think every year when Barcelona plays Salta, Salta always they have to take something. Yeah, yeah. So, so we haven't done the double over them since fourteen fifteen. Like, if we beat them at Balaedos, they will beat us at Camp Nou or we'll draw. It's, it's it, that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's such I a. Plus fifteen. Salta, Salta won that. Yeah, game yeah. Game yeah. Game. yeah, that's what I was saying. We yeah. started the season with seven wins out of seven. Then we lost <laughs> Mexico. And then we lost to Celta at home. Yeah. Insane stuff, insane stuff. And speaking of insane stuff, the Serie A title race. First of all, congrats to Inter for winning the Copa Italia. Beautiful mm. final. But we don't think they can win Serie A, do we? I mean, it is that. So Milan are going to dangerous territory, playing against the mid-table team. <laughs> Because we know how mid table teams in Syria are. They're like, hey, we have nothing to play for, but we'll make sure we make life hell for you. Yeah. yeah they have to play Sassuolo away, and Inter have to play some Doria, who are safe at this point. So, yeah. I still hope Milan can just, you know, it's one more game and they can win this Scudetto for the first time since 2012. So, let's go, Milan. Milan and, and Italy, they don't get enough credit. I guess partly because in European stage they haven't really performed well, but yeah. they, they put out a beautiful like race there. Also in Coppa Italia, it was a good brand. It was a, it was a brilliant game, mm -hmm. and it was very exciting. Yeah, it was a very exciting final, and Juve were very good in it until the last moment and the extra time. They just fell apart, and the penalty decisions also played their part too. But yeah, Inter. I feel though that if Inter managed to win Syria, this season is definitely much better than last. Like this title win will be, may somehow mean more, given that yeah. it's against their rivals, and they also did the double, won the double. Yeah, that is true. And for them, for Inter, do you think it's been how you rate your season? Really it's it's been a very very good season, especially in Europe, where they finally got out of their group. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fortunate to lose to Liverpool, who are in the final. And even in that, in the second leg, they could have gone more if I think yeah. Alex uh, Sanchez got the red. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, they could have put them on a good pressure. Sure. And if they beat, in, uh, if they beat Liverpool, and they passed to the final, and they had Villarreal and Benfica, who are very good teams in the competition this year. So who knows what's going to happen? Speaking of finals, the FA Cup it wasn't as good as the Cup. So. Yeah, the same. Basically, deja vu from the Carabao Cup final: Chelsea versus Liverpool, nil nil, extra time. Chelsea lose on penalties again. 
And this is Chelsea's third FA Cup final loss in a row. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I didn't know that until I saw someone point out that they lost to Arsenal in 2020, Leicester in 2021, and now Liverpool. Insane. And for Liverpool, this must give them tremendous optimism going into the final stretch of the season. Yeah. It will give them tremendous confidence because their rivals for the Premier League, Man City, dropped points against West Ham. I mean, Man City are still in the driving race, but it will definitely go down to the last day of the season if Man City can drop points again. And Liverpool have the chance to win a trip, win a quadruple, I mean. But Salah, he might not be available for the next two games or the Champions League final. How much of an impact can that have for the board? Yeah, it would be a big impact because while Salah hasn't been at his best since AFCON, he's still very important for Liverpool. And the issue is that all the other four is Liverpool have a very left-sided heavy. There's no real replacement for Salah on the right wing that's going to feel organic. Mane used to play there, but then Mane is more... I don't want to say it like this, but he kind of sold his soul for goals and assists. So he's not really that <laughs> big right winger he was at Southampton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Luis Diaz could probably do something there, but it's not going to be the same. Yeah, and it's been such a great time. Also, Van Dyke also came off, so that's another worry Liverpool potentially has. Seems like the Real Madrid version is working over time. <laughs> Yeah, but then Real Madrid have Alaba missing. He hasn't, even if he plays in the final, I fear he he won't be match fit at all. And Militao has been looking out of sorts for some reason. <laughs> but do you think it helps Real Madrid to have the season wrapped up and to be mentally not there in the Liga I, compared I, to a local situation? I feel it's more of a harm for Real Madrid than Liverpool. But well, it is that even if you're in the situation where you have a lot of games left and there are nothing to play for, you still have to come out with the mindset that we have to win because once you switch off, it's hard to switch back on again. Yeah, if Liverpool are currently having to stay switched on versus Real Madrid, who may or may not be switched on, and uh, not in their heads, so I won't know. I feel like the advantage mentally is with Liverpool. I would agree with that. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's move over to the Bundesliga. There was some excitement in the race for fourth. We had Bayer Leverkusen versus Freiburg. And there was a period of time in that game when it looked like Freiburg could seal the fourth spot. Mm-hmm. Arminia was beaten every Leipzig. Freiburg, it was 1 1. And they had like so many chances to go 2 1. But very close don't have any battle. Yeah. But still, it's a very good achievement for Freiburg to get to Europe. So they can look at what Leipzig and Frankfurt did and be encouraged that, hey, we could have a deep European run. They could still get the last lap for Leipzig because I believe they're playing Leipzig and the DFB. Yeah, they are. And I'm pretty sure all of Germany will be rooting for Freiburg. Don't ask me why. Because <laughs> they don't want to sow that dream to win a tax on Yeah. Speaking uh, of, and we forgot something in Syria. Roma having 46 shots but drawing 1 1 with Venezia. Oh my God, that, that was so wacky. Yeah, that, that's FIFA at its best. You know, it, it's, it's so scripted. Like, there are things that have happened in football this year that have been like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't get too upset at the computer when it happens to me because it's so scripted. Even the Real Madrid City game. If yeah. that happens to you in FIFA, you're throwing your controller and you're like, this is impossible. This never happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a it's a pad breaker for sure. <laughs> yeah. And let's move back to Germany and talk about Frankfurt because they have the Europa League final this weekend. Oh, sorry, on Wednesday. Mm. How do we feel they're going to do? In that regard. Hold on, let me look at Frankfurt's results. They drew again. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. You know, Frankfurt, 
their last two wins have been against Barcelona and West Ham. Every other team has been a draw. Yep, they, they live for the Europa League. Yeah, which means, yeah, they are going to win against Rangers based on this four. <laughs> My goodness. <it's, laughs> anytime I look at Frank Walsh for my like, what could have been if we used our heads or if PK <laughs> was fit instead of Eric Garcia for both? Okay, for the first leg, Garcia was fine. The second leg, he just lost his head again. That's it. That's, I mean, from, that's from Eric Garcia. He's, he's always one mistake away. Yeah, exactly. Like, he, he does this thing where he's always holding people. I'm like, what are you doing? Stop holding people. You're like in this age with VAR. You are <laughs> going to get caught. Don't know why he keeps doing it, man. Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. what could have been? Yeah, what could have been? But it's I track back with it in there. And yeah. I, I believe yeah. both of us agree that they're going to win the Europa League. We could be wrong, but. Yeah, I, I mean, they have to win it after what Rangers did on social media. Oh my God, that's sweet. That's sweet. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's New Celtic or the better team from Scotland. <laughs> it's like it's it's a different, it's a totally different concept. Exactly. It's like, what the hell does this mean? I don't know why it's not getting more rich than it's gotten. Because <laughs> some very on the football. Like at first when yeah. I saw it, I was like, I, I was like, what does this even mean? Then I was like, some very Mexico. And it's like it, it's like, do you remember when Donald Trump cheated? That thing was yeah. Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, I saw, a, I saw that meme. Exactly. Yeah. I saw that meme too. <laughs> yeah, like same minute. Yeah. My God. But, but but speaking of Celtic, back, Celtic think. are back in the Champions League, which is great for Scottish football. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be nice. Like, going, like, teams going to Celtic Park. It's like beautiful. I just hope they don't get tied with a British team, with, like, an English team, because I feel that really is a fun for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But on, in Germany, Dortmund, the last game of the season, Erling Haaland scored. He's left Borussia Dortmund. He's gone to Manchester City. Mm-hmm. Is that a good decision for him at Borussia City? Yeah, I mean it's the best thing for both parties. Haaland clearly made it clear that he wasn't going to be there next season, and you know there was a time where his form was off. Injuries have also affected the season, so I mean, it was predictable that he was going to leave at some point. Just as it's going to be predictable that what's his name? Yeah. Ade- oh, Ade- oh, Ade- oh, <laughs> oh, oh, you, I, I even forgot that Mukoku. Yeah, he'll probably leave at some point, which is frustrating because as someone who likes Dortmund, you wish they would keep their players for longer, but you know, it's not, it's what it is. And they also have Mark Walker, who's he's great mm-hmm. at FIFA. So. Yeah, he like looks like he looks like he's going to be a very good player. Yeah, and Adeyemi is like at the moment he's already really good. I've never seen him score again. He tore apart the game both games. Like he already has that um, skill, mm-hmm. that finishing touch. Maybe he's can work on his penalties because he missed like two penalties in that game. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, he should probably work on that. But I feel Dortmund did that. They have the right replacing with them. I think I'm not yeah. the games around mm-hmm. the younger players. Maybe things might not be that bad because I might lose Lewandowski to Barcelona, and if that happens, they have a they have a good huge chance to win the Yeah, because without Lewandowski, depending on. Who- it's hard to see who is available right now that they can bring in to replace them. Unless maybe Ronaldo decides he's had enough of Manchester United you know, and decides to want to try Bundesliga. But besides him, it's going to be hard to replace them just his goals. And yeah, we might have an open Bundesliga race for once. <laughs> sure. But do you not trust uh, Chico? Mm-hmm, sure. Because yeah. Andersky might end up staying yeah, he might. It's just the way it feels. It feels like he's either going to get a mega contract, mm-hmm. I can see, or I can see Bayern staying if they if they know that there's the one. Maybe they think of Verna coming in and he can do that. Job. Or and he also worked under Nats. 
Minister yeah. and now those things. So true, true. Seems like a fair for that. Mm. Yeah, if I'm Ronaldo, right, I would go for to Bayern Munich win the Bundesliga, mm -hmm. then go to PSG when we got really good. Especially, especially <laughs> now. And then I'll be like, I'm the only player in the world who's won a couple top five leagues. Yeah. Before me. Because <laughs> Danilo is sort of still a stunner when he, when he wants. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, you can yeah. you can do that and you know have the edge of Hermes in the fan words on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, speaking of PSG, you, might, you think you might leave? Honestly, I yeah, I guess you will leave. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess there's no other way. He, there's no way he's going to stay, in my opinion. So he should just leave and try something new. Maybe. And how would PSG set up without him? Because uh, they have Mario Icardi, who's still there. They have Julian Drax. Where's but... Icardi, really? <laughs> Drax, like, <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, okay. We, we have oh, well, they're, they're big names. They are big names, but PSG needs to really beef up the squad. Even if Mbappe stays, they need to beef up the squad because I feel like PSG were overrated by many when the whole transfer things are happening. Because if you look beyond their first 11, their bench, the quality of the bench players coming to replace the starting level is not that good. So they need to change that. It also depends on who is going to be the coach next year because it might not be Poch. Zizou is still out there waiting to coach a super team, whether it's France or PSG. <laughs> As usual. Mm -hmm. As usual, but if Mbappe leaves, do we think there's any of the teams in Liga who can challenge them? Like we have Monaco, we have Marseille, Marseille who have San Paulo there, and Monaco with the amazing Di San Benieta. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible, but it's not going to happen next year. I feel the gap between PSG and the rest of them is too much to be overcoming. But that's for you. I can complain on this podcast that three times has been played in the press conference. Come again? Like you frequently complain on this podcast that every time PSG has played, you've not been able to see them. Yeah, but the thing is that, yeah, the thing is that individual brilliance goes a long way for PSG. Yeah. Okay, got, okay let's look at the league table now. PSG have 83 points based off said individual brilliance. If Messi remembers how to score goals next season, then I can steal them winning. But if he's still, then it's over. He's if he's still allergic to goals and Neymar is still doing whatever the hell he's doing, then it's possible. But you'd imagine that Pierre, you'd imagine that 18, like 18 points difference would be too much to overcome in one season. Because huh. you, you never know. You never. Yeah, know. you never know. Never. Because PSG yeah, last yeah. season, I believe they only got eight, right? Yeah, and, and it's strange that PSG have never got to that hundred points, given the ball gap between mm -hmm. themselves and the rest of the league. Yeah, yeah because what usually tends to happen is that when PSG have won the league, they start losing to everybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's funny because yeah. the numbers are so normal compared to the rest of them. Your stuff to leave, man. You wouldn't yeah. even think PSG are much better or they're damaged. Yeah. Exactly. Because easily I've hit 90 something points this season. If they didn't decide to be so charitable after winning their league. Yeah. Well, I guess with that, we're going to end the podcast. Thanks again, mm -hmm. Oscar, for coming on. No problem. And Thanks for having me. Yeah, and we're going to be excited, excited towards that European League final, the last day of La Liga, Serie A. Cheers. Bye. Right.